Dr. Carroll, I, I, I just want to give yeah. you an opportunity to jump in because I know you wanted to. So we don't need any genetic tests to know that people should lead a healthier lifestyle. They should exercise, they should eat a well-balanced diet, they should not smoke, and they should not drink too much. And when we talk about studies and include lifestyle changes, those are consistently the ones we talk about. It's not complicated. It's making it almost too complicated to start talking about genes. And I'd agree that you know, we have to start somewhere, but where we start is with research. And once we prove that these things work, that's when we should be going out and spreading it sort of to a mass audience. We don't start with telling people we're gonna do these tests and do anything without the concrete evidence. And almost all the evidence that exists are from very small studies, from animal studies, or from studies which are not well-designed randomized controlled trials. We can poo-poo the Stanford study all we like, but that was a large multi-year randomized controlled trial and it was very well done, and it failed to find any effect with a genetic test. I'd only push forward on one more thing. There have been many, many, many studies about weight loss, and while exercise certainly has its place in a healthy lifestyle, and I will say that exercise is as close as we get to a miracle drug, there's very little evidence that exercise contributes as much to weight loss as we think. The vast majority of weight loss is due to dietary changes, and that is not a problem in the Stanford study in trying to distinguish between whether a low carbohydrate or a low fat diet worked for any individual one way or the other. But at the end of the day, the reason they even did the study was because of the fact that there are people who are not doing well with diet, but they are doing well with exercise or vice versa. And that's where we want to advance science, is to understand Actually, yeah. why certain people are doing better than others. And in every study, whether they say that this is a generic diabetes or high blood pressure study, there are people within that group that it doesn't fit well with. In the Stanford study, one third of the patients in there didn't even fit into the genetics they came up with. So they had to drop those. But so you're taking- they, did, they did not drop those. They didn't. And well, let's I'm be saying clear, that the they did not they fit did the into their combination though. The reason that they did the study was because there's been a long-term debate about whether a low carbohydrate or a low fat diet is, is more successful to lose weight. Uh, that was why they did the randomized controlled trial. As an adjunct, they also did genetic testing on the participants who are already randomized to one of those two diets to see if people responded one way or the other also based on genetics. They did not find that it did. But the That's scientists not a fault of the study. But and they don't actually say that it's a flaw. They said that they couldn't detect it. And I agree with you 100% that, that because three genetic tests didn't work doesn't mean that we will not find one in the future that does. I concede that point, but we still don't have the tests that we know work. And until we do, it seems a little early to start recommending that people do this in a widespread way when we don't have that proof. And I agree. And I think to the extent, the one thing that was liberating about this study and a lot of studies now is that if you undertake a healthier diet, and you can go the low carb route or the low fat route, and what's really cool is when you make those changes, your body responds. And I, I think there is more science that needs to be done. And I, I am glad that, that we are pushing to look and see if there is a connection at some point. Um, but I will ask, and I'm not, I'm not asking this because sure. uh, I, I'm trying to be mean, but how much does it cost? It's actually, so if you already have your genetics done with other company, it's $49 to get the report. So, and if you, and if you don't have your DNA, it's 99